Uh, thank you all for inviting me. It's incredibly generous uh, with you. I'm, I, I know that um, probably most of you all know what the CTSA is, but um, I, I probably should just say a word. Um, I'm, I'm the director of informatics at NCATS DCI. And DCI is the, the, the group that um, funds the CTSA. And um, I'm going to be talking a little bit very briefly about some of the things we're thinking about uh, and with the use of real world data and um, would love any questions if you have any. So with that, let's move forward. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to talk about is, um, you know, and, and I, I know I'm speaking to the choir here, but, um, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is real world data. And um, we've, we've certainly um, encountered a lot. We were real believers in real world data. And yet, I think that I, I want to emphasize that there's a lot of issues with real world data. I often say that real world data is um, from EHRs is um, uh, required, but not enough or, or not adequate enough. And one of the things that we um, have certainly seen with, with the real world data that we've um, been encountering uh, is a, a certainly a lack of quality and missingness. Um, and I think that um, as a, NCATS would very much like to have the communities um, of all the common data models coming, um, working together on quality um, scripts that can be shared and used across the different common data models. Um, I, I, and that is the upper quadrant left. On the, on the upper quadrant right, um, the other thing that we've, we've seen um, that we would really encourage in and be interested in is um, common phenotypes or value sets or knowledge objects. These would be objects that could be validated and worked on together um, and could be in kind of a, a store, so to speak. I mean, so I'm um, sorry, this is the data quality slide. I, sh I should go back and say, this is a slide of units that are missing and in N3C. We're finding that you know unit incorrectness in the HR can be up to 50% of some sites. And we put a lot of effort into rescuing units. The, the other thing is a validation of, 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 of different um, knowledge objects. And we think that these knowledge objects need to be shared and um, um, and so they should need to have good provenance because we need to give attribution to the folks who use them as well as validating them. We love for this to be in a public repository and something that we very much support. The other quadrant, which in that circle is the lower um, left, is um, is uh, what I was saying at the beginning. If the EHR data is necessary but not sufficient. Um, clearly, EHR data is a snapshot in time of somebody getting care, but a person's health is really the connection of, of many types of data. And uh, this, you know, we feel like there's, we've got to work hard to connect those data. And I, I, I just gave some examples um, on the slide of different data we can connect. And the last slide I, I wanted to talk to you all about is something that I think that this particular community um, could really contribute to. There are a lot of real world data efforts out there, a lot of um, uh, networks, OMOP and Cornet and um, Sentinel and Trinetics and, and obviously ACT I2B2. But one of the things that we've really observed is, is really the, the lack of uh, clinical de decision support and algorithmic best practices. And we call this uh, our gap initiative, which is really um, the idea is that the academic community um, to date has not successfully um, used machine learning um, uh, in a way that is, is trustable. Um, and, and I think there's an enormous opportunity for this, for the um, CTSA in general, to work on best practices and benchmarking of, of machine learning um, algorithms so they can be um, confidently distributed across the network and used. And this is just a couple of articles that um, I've pulled up as, as examples of concerns. Um, the other area I want to talk a little bit about that I thought that this, this particular community could really 
help us with um, at, at NCATS or with our desire is, um, I'm using a quote, a, a modified quote from Chris Shute, um, uh, the chasm of scientific and clinical divide. Increasingly, we're seeing a divide between the scientific world knowledge, which is, of course, exploding, and the clinical world knowledge. And um, we think that the CTFA um, and the translational science community particularly could serve a wonderful role um, in, in this slide. The, the woman in the middle at the bottom of the valley, the chasm, is how do we connect these data? Because I don't think that, this is my opinion, but as we see the commoditization of, of real world data from the Googles and the um, Microsofts and the AWSs and the Oracles, um, I don't think that they quite understand the depth or the knowledge it's going to take to, to glue these two things together. And getting information out of real world data, less clinical data, without connecting it to the scientific side of the world or the basic scientists, the preclinical science, really misses the etiology of much of the diseases and, and, and very gets much to you know, efficiency and care. Um, things that are working, but but getting to the etiology is something I feel like this community can really um, help with. Um, the next thing I thought I wanted to talk about that I felt that was really unique among the community that does translational science is what, what I refer to as code map services. This isn't terminology services where terminology services really focused on conversion of ICD 910 to SNOMED or you know, uh, RX norm NDC codes. This is really um, the ability of to move the data from common data models up and down the life cycle all the way to um, CDISC. Um, and I'm sure most folks on the phone on the Zoom know this, but FDA only uh, accepts data in a standard called CDISC SDTM. And in order to increase our impact, the ability to move data to the FDA, I think is a hurdle that would that this community uniquely understands the connection between real world, maybe retrospective data, the way to look at it, and prospective data and potential submission. And I feel like there's a, an opportunity here for the community to help bridge this gap. Um, um, I, I, in the center of this, of course, is FIRE USCDI. Um, I think that this is very much gained a lot of traction um, from ONC as well as HL7. Um, the next thing I want to just switch to is, is a little bit different subject, and, um, and, and, and it's the idea of a virtual research organization. Um, uh, in CATS, um, when, when the CTSA was first stood up, I, I think it was really envisioned a, a, around 10 to 12, 10, 13, 14 institutions, depending on what time of year you ask us um, and what, what sites are active. We're, we're right around 60 sites right now. And, this, and our budget has not increased at the rate of the number of sites that have come on board. And which is really putting a squeeze on everybody um, and, and our ability to fund this many sites as well as um, the sites not getting as much money as they have gotten in the past. And so we have really focused on at the last five years on helping to support the infrastructure for a virtual research organization, which is a you know, it, 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 we feel like it really encourages collaboration and, um, but it also encourages um, team science as well as, well as for um, uh, just economies of scale to be moving things from on-prem to more of a cloud-based system. And, and certainly NCATS has invested an enormous amount of effort and time into this. If we did, move towards that, and I often refer to it as a tenant or a condo in a building, the way you can imagine this space would be NCATS would support and own the building um, that in, and that's the plumbing and the electricity and the, you know, the garbage collection. But the tenants or the people who own the condos would be the people who would use the services in their own condominium, their own apartment, their own tenant where they could have these services, but use shared services, but 
we, the government, we CTSA, the support of the CTSA in CATS would just support the walls, but then we don't have to pay for walls and plumbing at each place. And so, uh, you know, what is that? What is that? space look like? What tools do you need in it? What security does that need to look like in order for the community to feel trust in moving their data into a space like that? Um, next thing I want to talk about is the concept of a ephemeral workbench. Um, we imagine a future where data is just moving from place to place from, for authorized users. And in this slide, the circle with that says compute environment four is the ephemeral workbench. And so in this example, I just pulled Nidric, which is kind of an, an imaging repository um, run by NIBID. And of course you guys know what Hornet is. So you could imagine an authorized user, number two said, had authorization to come in and request data from these two real world networks and, or near world repositories. And um, uh, that authenticated person would then get access to Midric images linked to Pocori, Pocornet data or ACT or OMOP or Sentinel, doesn't really matter. And they would be able to use this data um, for a period of time, but then that ephemeral workbench, that space with all those tools that I showed you in the last slide, would actually disappear because it's it's a study that has a beginning and an end. And so the idea is, is that there would be lots of green dotted lines by lots of people and data was, was either accessible or literally physically moving to these HPCs, these high performance computing areas for this work. So um, I promise I would be very short with this talk. So this is my last slide and I put this reminder here for me to remember to say a few other things. Um, the CTSA is um, really has some very unique abilities that nobody else has. I, I never, I, in the six plus years now I've been at, in the federal government, I, I still don't think we're leveraging anywhere near our potential. But one of the things that I have seen in, in my years and now five years, six years in the federal government is there is a convergence of of efforts coming on that I have not seen having been in this field for 40 years now, um, no, 30 years, excuse me. One of them is that I wanted to make sure people were familiar with, which is ONC's um, TEFCA initiative, obviously the Common Core that I've mentioned before, FDA's um, initiative called SHIELD, which is um, working on um, local codes, specifically lab coding, um, the thing that we talked about, CDM to CDISC, is something that FDA is very interested in. HL7, um, the Vulcan is one of many accelerators, but the Vulcan is really a fire accelerator for research in um, uh, using fire in research. Um, and it, it's pretty um, active community and worth looking into. And then um, uh, uh, just the... Um, uh, just, I just wanted to, um, you know, talk about the CDISC and FDA and HL7, um, and and they're interested in not only real world data, but um, HL7 certainly um, is uh, leading a lot of efforts, um, not only Vulcan, but and the accelerators, but different common data models that are linked to fire, and so I think more and more. Um, there's a convergence of interests that we all need to be aware of and can take advantage of and will really offer us a lot more um, opportunities. And, and we shouldn't think only within the academic community because um, I, I see a, a, an opening for partnership. And, and, and with that, I'll stop. Um, if, if, if there are any questions, I, I know we're behind the time uh, and you put them in the chat, I'll, I'll, I'll ha happily offer them or answer them. But, um, if not, um, thank you so much for inviting me. I hope this was, um, somewhat informative.
Ken, can you hear us okay? I, I can hear you. Great, Ken. So any questions for, for Ken? We've had a packed agenda and it's right at lunchtime. So I think everyone's gonna break for lunch. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Thank you all. Bye-bye now.